Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Bjorn Eckeberg, and we're going to be talking about the Flex Beam, the wearable infrared therapy device that optimizes your body's ability to recover faster. And it's even been quoted as the new favorite recovery device by Martin Odegaard. He's the captain of the Arsenal FC. If you are a fan of football, he is a big deal. Now, cool part about this, and of course, we're going to talk about it in the podcast here, is that the technology that the FlexBeam has is portable. So if you're familiar with red light therapy, you know you got to plug it in usually to something and you've got either a pad or you've got a panel and it doesn't travel so well. But this one, you can move around outdoors with it. You can, you don't have to be plugged in anything. So cool. So if you've heard any of my podcasts before, you know that I'm a big fan of red light therapy. I even have some published articles on it. And it is one of my favorite things for helping with recovery. And so nevertheless, this is going to be a great podcast. If you've never heard of red light therapy, you don't know necessarily how it works. Bjorn and I am going to go into it in depth. So let's introduce you to Bjorn Eckeberg and the Flex Beam. Hey, Health Junkies, I have Bjorn Eckeberg on, and we're going to be talking about FlexBeam. We're going to be talking about his product from Recharge Health, and we're going to be talking about red light therapy, which is one of my most favorite things. I have a lot of favorite things, but this one's probably one of like my top five um, in terms of health, wellness, and recovery. So Bjorn, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. I'm excited to be here. So how did you get in to Recharge Health and, and how did you get into to working with red light therapy? Give us your story. What's what's your background here? I mean, it's sort of a circuitous and serendipitous route, I suppose, very briefly distilled. Uh, I have a, sort of a long uh, history living in North America, doing uh, higher university degrees, pursuing philosophy of science, actually and then a creative stint in the film and TV industry. Oh. Uh, one day I was approached by uh, an old friend of mine who had another friend that I knew who were um, basically their expertise was in creating hardware and electronics devices. They made solar cell lamps uh, for the European market based in Asia. And they had uh, come across some research that really intrigued them. Uh, some of it was NASA research and PubMed papers on something that was called photobiomodulation, which is now later understood as red light therapy. <laughs> uh, like it's an umbrella term for light actually impacting your physiology. And they were sort of intrigued by this uh, and they showed it to me. Uh, I had never heard of any such thing before. So I was a little bit puzzled. Um, <laughs> And the unique position that we were in with two of my co-founders, plus a medical doctor, Dr. Zulia Frost, who also joined the team early, who'd worked with this technology before and knew about it, uh, was that we were in a position to kind of make a device on our own, not having to rely on an external factory or anything. We had the resources, we can create our own product. And uh, when I first learned about some of the benefits from this technology, and you've used it a lot, Janine, so uh, like you, you know quite a bit about how powerful it can be if you have the right application and you have the right dosage and uh, and so on it can do wonders for your health but i was just baffled by why we haven't heard about this before and uh what i ended up concluding from when i was first introduced to this is that nobody has really made it super accessible and easy to use yet you can if you're really gung-ho about it you can you know rebuild you remodel your basement and put up wall panels or you can do all the things and you can get the technology and get the actual light that uh, stem, uh, your cells and all the stuff we will talk about how it works. But you can't really find on the market at the time, you couldn't find something that was portable, that was like still very powerful and just super easy to use and use whenever you want it. So we decided to create the world's first wearable form of red light therapy or infrared light therapy in the form of uh, FlexBeam is our first uh, invention. Uh, and my role was in 
sort of taking it to market first on crowdfunding and trying to find an audience for this kind of uh, this kind of product. And as it turned out, uh, it is becoming quite popular. And I think we've hit on something that is quite unique in the marketplace. Uh, and still, while we're still very small and we depend on getting the word out through, I mean, people who <laughs> know about this technology like you, uh, we are aiming to take this to a wider market and make it more accessible for a mass market. Absolutely. I mean, huge. That's why when I saw Flexman, I was like, oh, this is neat. I'm You're not attached to a cord. You're able to take it around. And and this was one of the things that a lot of my, my athletes, but also my clients in my office were like, yeah, it's really nice, but I can only stay in one place with it. And, and that's a problem. And then, then it turned into, we had the panels and they could work out in front of the panels or ride the bike in front of the panel or do things. And I, I still do that to this day. I laughed when you said you have to remodel your, your basement or a room because I'm going, yep, that's kind of what we did with, with my area. And, and it's great, but when you're traveling, then what? Or when you've got something that you're trying to rehab and you're in the field trying to rehab, meaning like maybe you play a sport, maybe you're weightlifting, whatever it may be, then what do you do? And I feel like that's when it had the most ability because now we're getting that that beam, that, that light there to where it needs to be helping with circulation and healing and stem cells when the person is actually active. So mm -hmm. this brings me, of course, to your your one of your spokes folks, um, Martin Odegaard. T tell us a little bit about how you approached him, what what he started using it. What's the story behind him? Yeah, so we have, uh, um, we have a few superstars in, in sports that I got in contact with last year that we got to trial the product. Uh, Martin Erdegaard is one of them. He's the captain of Arsenal. For those who follow soccer or football, European Football, it's the uh, the leading club in the Premier League, which is the biggest football league in the world, and he's the captain of that team. Uh, he's He was nominated for the Golden Ball. He's one of the top 30 players in the world uh, in, in football. Uh, and when I met with him and got him to try it, he had already uh, tried the technology before. Like you, he had tried panels, and he'd come across it because he had heard about and understood the potential for improved recovery. And so for him, the pitch was actually was much quicker than it was for some of the other athletes that we worked with because Martin just immediately, he did exactly like you, Janine, like he saw it and he's like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to stand in front of a panel. I can take it with me, yes. right? And he can use it and the targeted effect. And for your listeners, I would just describe it generally. This is like a belt with pods and it would, broadly speaking, it would fit around your waist or over your shoulder. It's bendable. It's super flexible. So you can put it anywhere on your body and you can attach it to your body right, wherever it hurts. Um, and that's our approach to sort of there's it's twofold with this device. One is the ease of use. So you don't have to stand in front of a panel. So you can literally like put it on your back if your lower back is the issue and you can cook or you can drive a car or whatever. So that it's sort of time saving in that sense or it's super easy to use. And for us, this was important because we realized that uh, what the what is the best red light therapy device? Well, the best device is the one that you use the most because to get the benefit from this technology, you need to use it more than just one time. You can have some results already from one or two or three uses, but it's the consistent recurring use that will really get you a lot of benefits and results. And what happens when you stand in front of a panel is very often is what we see. It's uh, fun for maybe the first week and you're all gung-ho and disciplined. And after a while, it just becomes a chore. Yeah. So we wanted to design something that was so easy that you, you know, you have no excuse for not using it, basically, and you can integrate it into the day and then have a concentrated enough dose that in 10 minutes is usually enough. It's like 10 minutes, uh, maybe 20 if you have something extraordinary, but it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It's like a concentrated dose. Uh, so that was one one aspect of it that really intrigued Mark. He has, a, as a football player, he has knee issues hip issues like it's in targeted areas right so for him to be able to wrap it around uh wherever he had a particular uh need uh that was just a much easier sell for him to use on a daily basis uh but the second part of this has to do with power and the power output and actually getting a sufficient dosage of light. Uh, you will probably know from having researched a lot of devices that are out there, there's a lot of things out on the market that are various lamps and, and things that you can get for relatively cheap. 
what they will mostly have in common not all the some of the panels are quite powerful but a lot of the cheaper lamps they don't have a lot of output like the, you you get the light frequency you want, but you do not actually get the kind of power output you need to really stimulate your cells, right? To really penetrate through the skin and to stimulate. Uh, and so that was one of the, the key things we wanted to do with the targeted device is to make it powerful enough so your dosage is very, very strong and consistent. Uh, and one of the things you that's important, you I don't know if you realize this, Janine, when you use a panel, but the light you get from a panel, if you're only three, four, five inches away from the panel, you're already losing 80, 90% of the power. So if you really want to uh, want to work on a certain area or make sure you get a certain like dosage of infrared light that you want, you really have to take put it very, very close to the skin. And so that was what we wanted to design, not just something that was portable, but also something that's bang on the skin that doesn't lose anything of like, there's no light lost in the travel from the device and into your skin, yes. basically. And this, this makes FlexBeam, uh, I am, uh, I'm quite confident to say it makes it more effective than other red light therapy devices for treating anything because you, you in the process and you like all the energy you you have from the lights go straight through your skin into where it's needed. So those are the two things, the power and the portability that we wanted to wanted to create with FlexSpeam. It's it's incredibly important because yes, yeah, so at the beginning with with panels, we were kind of being sold on you can be a little bit away from it. And then there was also the concept of you might get burned if you are right close to it. So of course we're gonna talk about that here in a second with the flex beam being right on the body. Cause over time I learned that yes, I needed to have these things up close to my skin, which of course now I've kind of morphed into different panels that I have within my office um, that are going right onto the skin flexible versus my hang from the ceiling kind of guys that are now more a novelty, I would say, than anything at this stage of the game. But still, I, I kind of believe a little's going to get something. So let's talk a little bit about one of the big things that folks will always say, like, can't it burn you? Can't exposure of too long of a time frame cause trouble? Give us a scoop on on how you countered certain things with the FlexBeam and, and things of that nature. Yeah, well, um, we encase the the lights on the FlexBeam. So there is a there is a casing or a lens in front and the lights are receded a little bit from the surface. We also added fans around it to cool it down. Right. And this is an important feature you don't see in any panels or any other kind of um, devices. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get really hot. And the reason it can get hot and then burn your skin is not the lights themselves, but that the device itself or like, you know, the unit you are using is overheating because the, the lights are actually quite powerful. If you're going to have an effect, you need powerful lights. So that was one of the design principles uh, for us and our inventor. Uh, Adrian Helder, who you know came across this NASA research, is like was just dead set on creating something that was encased and had fans. So our device is the belt that has got a little bit of extra bulkiness on the light pods, is because we have fans that cool it down, so that you don't get that sort of hot effect from using it. It's warming on your skin, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't create heat. Nice. Nice. So the only contrary to that indication we have regarding burning is if you have a very fresh tattoo with black ink, you should be probably, you should be careful. It won't burn you right away, but we've had some really, let's say some really gung-ho muscle beefy guys who go to the gym and they love the effect of this that it has for their performance. And what often happens with when you get excited about something, you do it three, four, five times more than you really need to. So we had a few cases and therefore we put in some contraindications like user manual as well. Uh, people would use it for one hour on like freshly black ink. That did not look so good for the skin after. Uh, but I have to stress that that is like overuse and it's a very specific condition. Otherwise there is no burning effect or any harmful effects from, uh, from using, I mean, red light therapy in general is very, very safe. Yes. 
Yes, that's how I have found it to be. Now, the ink and the tattoos, this is a different story. I haven't heard this before. So this is good info because you do wonder, you know, with, with that kind of thing and overuse, what could happen? Now, what is the what is the typical recommended usage of the flex beam? You know, how much a day, how many minutes per session? What do you guys recommend? So we set up an automatic uh, program. So it basically you just uh, you just hit whatever program one of three that uh, is based on how deep you want to treat. So there's more infrared in the strongest program, so it penetrates more deeply if you have deep tissue issues. But all programs run ten minutes, so it turns itself off. Uh, we found on average from all of our testing that a ten minute dose is usually enough. Some people like to do it twice, sort of analogous to if you take a supplement, one to two capsules, like one to two mm -hmm. sessions yeah. in a day is usually enough. Now, we have some specific protocols for specific conditions that we have on our uh, website and that our doctor on the team has developed a lot of protocols for different kinds of uses. So if you have, let's say you have multiple areas you want to reach and you have a complex kind of situation, like an acute injury or something, uh, you may want to consider doing it more frequently in the beginning, twice a day, times a day. For a general health regime, if you want to boost your gut health or just get a general sort of um, uh, beam some light into that shoulder that has been aching for a while, one to two sessions per day is plenty. That's enough, and you get results after a few days of using that extensively. It doesn't need to be more. And this is really crucial um janine like the uh the overuse will not be damaging uh from all the research is telling us and all the use cases we see it's not dangerous to use it too much but if you use it too much you are not going to get an effect the body adapts very quickly that's why there's a window of dosage sort of an ideal or an optimal dose that we've tried to uh, create for the device so you don't need to use it more than 10 or 20 minutes uh, we can all get kind of over eager when something is working. And we see this a lot when people are mm -hmm. testing it out. And then when they get that response to something, you know, they had a pulled muscle or something. And it's like, damn, I can actually feel the difference in one day. And then they become super excited and they use it an hour, two hours every day. What happens with that is a little bit like you go to the gym and you have a hard workout and then you get so excited by that workout and you go back and you do three more times before you sleep. You're not going to get three times stronger. You're just going to wear out your muscles and you're going to wear out the stress response at the cellular level so that the, the net effect is actually less adaptation uh, or like less response in your in your body. So there is an optimal window there. That's great that you explained that because I think a lot of people, yes, there is that concept, right? If a little's good, then much more is going to be even better. And and at this point, of course, it's one of those things that, you know, your stem cells will time out your, you know, mm. your system will time out on the, on the ability of healing that it can only do within a certain time frame. So one of the things I think that I would love to to dive a little bit into if if at all possible is like you had mentioned the different protocols and and the depth because this is like the biggest argument that I get from folks online anytime I post something on red light therapy is is it is it going to work because how does it get past our skin and how far can it actually penetrate and you had mentioned the gut and that's one of the ones that a lot of folks will kind of argue with me that there's no way it's going to get to the digestive system and I'm like well mm -hmm. there's let's let's talk wavelengths here a little bit and and how you explain it to folks in terms of the different depths yeah because now we're getting into the difference between visible and invisible light right so we have mm -hmm. uh, energy that comes from the sun which is what engulfs us at all times we get some reprieve for him in nighttime but literally we're living close to a cosmic fireball of energy that sends energy like to us all the time in a whole broad spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. There's a very tiny part of that spectrum is called visible light. It runs from blue to red light through green. It's a very narrow bandwidth. That's what we can see with our eyes. But most of the energy that comes from the sun is in either uh, to the left side on the spectrum off of visible light is in the ultraviolet range, microwaves and so on. They're very short wavelengths. They're too short for the eyes to see. Uh, and there's a large section of the electromagnetic spectrum called the infrared spectrum. That is invisible light. Uh, you can feel it as heat, typically. 
So if you ever, you know, watch the sunset and you have that glowing feeling when you watch that beautiful red color, the glow you can have on that you can feel on your skin, that warmth, that is infrared. The color you see is red, but the infrared is a huge part of that spectrum. And it's the same principle for, I mean, the lights that are in FlexBeam and in a lot of panels is a combination of red, which is visible light, and then near infrared, which is invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, and the importance here in terms of wavelength is that uh, the infrared wavelengths are longer. Mm -hmm. uh, they are longer than the eye can then pick up as visible. Uh, but the longer wavelengths means that it has the ability to penetrate the skin. Uh, so some of your listeners may be familiar with the concept of infrared sauna, mm -hmm. which is becoming popular in some circles. Uh, that is a far infrared. That's uh, a different way we use in Bexbeam and that it's most red light therapy devices. It is an even longer wavelength, but that has the effect that it penetrates so deeply in that it actually induces sweat in people. So the far infrared has that capacity to go all the way through and then generate kind of heat and energy at the core of the body. Now, near infrared, which we use, which is the most sort of, uh, if you're ever going to talk about a magic kind of range on the electromagnetic spectrum, um, the near infrared, this is between 800 and 850 nanometers. Uh, it is uh, like any light in this range with sufficient output is shown to stimulate at the cellular level. So it stimulates the mitochondria uh, in your cells. And the mitochondria are the energy generators in your cells. So literally by being exposed to near infrared light, you are stimulating the cells to produce more energy to do what they do. And what do the cells usually do? Um, they repair themselves, right? They are engaged in healing and repair all the time. And when you give them more energy or stimulate uh, them with this kind of energy, they work faster and better. They basically get more food to do what they do best. Uh, and that's kind of, that's the, that's the beauty of near infrared treatment that you can't quite see with your naked eye, but it can get under your skin. Uh, we're talking two to four inches in with our power setting, depending on what's in the way. So if there's a huge mm -hmm. bone or something in between, it can't penetrate that far. But for deep tissue, for example, for lower back, you can get three, four cent, like three, four inches into the body. Uh, for a joint, like a knee or an elbow, we designed FlexBeam to have lights from three different angles so you can bend it so you basically can uh, get three different light pods are all uh, converting on the same point so you can literally get in and treat inside of a meniscus or similar kind mm. of joint area this is part of why we designed it in the sort of belt like shape is that you can you can uh, direct all of the light in the same direction if it's needed that's cool. That's something I hadn't thought about just looking at the device. But now that you mm -hmm. mention it and, and the way it's set up, yeah, we can direct the light in. Oh, that's super cool. So folks, what he's getting at here is say you have, like you had mentioned, a meniscus issue or say there's an elbow issue and it's deep mm -hmm. in there and nothing seems to be, you know, touching it. Now we've got three ways to kind of... And forgive me, laser beam is not exactly what's happening here. I just want to make sure that very clear. But I'm going to use the term to describe how those light beams are getting straight to, to the point. That's really cool. And for a doc like me, I'm like, okay, I'm thinking the hip, like kind of what you're talking with Martin and, and how targeting the hip. This is some really cool stuff, especially with four inches. I mean, that's a decent amount of distance we can get in to work at some of those little ligaments that can really cause some trouble, whether it's hip or SI joints or something of that nature too. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's why it's a, we see a lot of positive effects with injury, not just on the preventative side that you can do for generally to uh, boost your health, but injury recovery, because you can get more deep repair this way by the way that the device is designed. That's neat. I'm I'm thinking of very like various patients of mine who are going like, hmm, I've got lots of ideas now. Now, for those of you who are listening, I I apologize. We're gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Bjorn show the the device to kind of talk through it. And don't worry, you can catch it. We'll get the the clip up on Instagram, and I'll get the clip up on YouTube so you can actually see what things are looking like. So let's talk it through. So we've got it's like a band, it's a belt, and it's flexible. Hence the the term flex beam. 
And we've got pods there on each end because that's how he was describing the fans. So I'm going to let you take over, Bjorn, because I'm, I'm. Yeah, it's got four, uh, four pods. Uh, three of them are light pods. And I'm now going to t- turn it on so you can see what the lights are going to look like when you turn them on. Uh, there's three different settings. Again, they have to do with depth. So there's uh, one setting that's more for skin and surface. So red light that we haven't talked much about is very powerful for skin, for collagen production, elastin, etc. cetera. Uh, if you've heard about red light therapy in other circumstances than injuries and so on, it's usually like cosmetics and beauty yeah. applications. There's a lot of popularity around them. These are very low output devices. You don't need a lot of power to do your, you know, to... Uh, and get effects on your face but you do need quite a lot to repair uh in the body so we've added infrared uh which is the most powerful setting for repair and settings two and three then go deeper basically the more infrared you have the uh the more kind of the deeper in you can go and repair so now i turned it on the middle setting and you will see the lights are a combination of red and the infrared you can't quite see which has just got a little bit of a dark hue to it gotcha there we go. Yeah. Uh, and the lights are angled in different directions. So even though there are three pods, uh, they spread out in such a way that they give an even uh, they give an even distribution of light across the whole surface wherever you place it. Mm-hmm. So if you use it on your stomach, for example, which is a very popular wellness application, uh, you like the whole surface area of these three pods combined, you are now shining light onto that like the entire gut region if you hold it vertically for Ah. example yeah yeah i can see that okay okay so you can hold it uh sort of vertically a lot of uh, people if they're meditating they love actually putting it on their stomach while meditating so you get sort of positive boost to your to your gut while you are focusing your energy on it uh that is one like popular so general wellness application that you can use even if you're not in pain or don't have any aches or anything um you have a lot of light receptors in the stomach, uh, like we all do. A lot of the mitochondria actually sit in the stomach lining and so on. So uh, it is often what we recommend for people who want to feel the effect, like yeah. unsure if it's going to have an effect for them. It's like put it on your stomach for a session or two and see how that feels after. And maybe the next day, uh, if you notice any difference in digestion and and so on. And in most cases, that's... Uh, uh that definitely yields some sort of effect that you ah. can you can use the power i i can see i can see a combination kind of thing someone could could do that along with some changing up the diet things of that nature to to help improve things as a whole maybe even a post holiday detox of of sorts for for certain folks I mean, uh, I know from myself and people I know who use it a lot on the stomach is that it's a, it can be very comforting and it makes also sure that things are moving like for constipation and these kinds of things. Uh, like it, it definitely helps to sort of, uh, for the whole process to kind of to speed up and get more energy to do, you know, what the, what the gut is supposed to be doing makes anyway. Sense. Makes yeah. sense. Wow. I mean, I, I'm thinking so many other applications too. Just just for cell healing, a lot of folks have thyroid issues. I, I would be thinking, you know, neck. I would be thinking different things. Now, one of the things I get asked a lot, Bjorn, is is if your eyes come in contact with it, will it make you blind? And and I, you know, obviously, I'm always like, well, don't stare into the thing and put it right over your eyes. What is your, what is your what's the your guys's blanket statement on that? Just so folks get a little. Yeah, back. it's uh, exactly as you say, avoid staring into the lights. Um, the reason why it can be harmful if you stare into the lights for a long time. Uh, so it's not like what we're talking about here is not that you catch a glimpse of the lights, it won't have an effect. It would be the same as if you look at the sun. If you like stare at the sun for a second, you may get a little blink in your eye, but it's not going to damage your eyes. But if you stare at the sun for a minute, that's probably something you were advised as a kid to not do. Uh, for the same reasons, like in this device, so what happens with infrared light is because it's invisible, uh, your eyes don't naturally blink. So we actually put in some red light into the infrared setting to help the eye in case you were to look at it, like to get a blinking response. What can be dangerous of staring into infrared light is literally you like you, um, you don't have the normal blink response, which is a protecting protective response to your eyes 
Uh, so we we do give away like there's goggles inside of the box in case you want to use it over your face. Generally speaking, we just say avoid staring into the lights, but it's not dangerous unless you were to do that. It's a little bit like, you know, an hour on the tattooed body kind of thing. It's like overuse and, and so on. It's it's only if you do it extremely that it could be dangerous. That's that's you know, something I hadn't really thought about in terms of the blink response. That's something I don't think anyone's talked about before. That's really cool to, to know that, you know, that's part of why we've got that, that. I mean, um, there is a, um, there is a specialized use and there's, a, there's a lot of research indicating uh, that red light specifically can be uh, helpful for the cornea and for certain eye conditions. But this is something we we just generally advise. And then you need to speak to a medical practitioner about the, you know, to use it. Don't self-experiment with this and look into the light and, and so on. Because uh, these more delicate parts of your body, they need more specific and often lower doses than, you know, your muscles or your, like, your torso, so to speak, or your legs do. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the uh, of the eye, it's not to worry about, but uh, general general caution um, that these are powerful lights, you know. So uh, that's why you have to keep in mind when you're using it. Now, another thing well. I know I'm going to get is what yeah. about with pets? Can you use the flex beam with your pet? And uh, I would love to hear your your answer there. Absolutely, absolutely, it's one of the favorite applications we have for like pet owners who use it on their pets. So if you have a very long haired, uh, extremely furry pet, uh, the light's going to have a harder time penetrating than if you have some someone like short haired. Uh, we've actually developed, we haven't started uh, putting it into production and selling it, but we have an attachment in the pipeline that would help to get through the fur for when we focus more on this. But like we sell it to humans and they're the ones who usually uh, embrace this. But for cats and dogs uh, and horses, uh, specifically horses that have targeted issues. Uh, we have a lot of case studies uh, on this being like giving positive results. It works on animals as well as it does with humans. Uh, dosage may vary, um, but we found that if this is still a 10 minute session is still within the same zone. Nice. Uh, I have myself, I have a cat uh, that loves doing this at night that's nice and warming, but he often walks away after six, seven minutes. He's had enough and I usually... I think that they're more intuitive and they kind of know when it's when it's the right call to go. Yeah. Kind of yep. Yeah. They're impressive creatures. It's it's impressive. We can learn a lot from them. But thanks for thanks for sharing that because I know that people are gonna ask me, like, can I put it on my dog, my cat? I mean, horse, I didn't even think about horses, but it makes sense, right? So oh man. You they know. often have sort of uh, hip uh, kind of issues or like very targeted issues. Uh, of course, the flex beam is very small on a horse, uh, but it can be super helpful in a concentrated area. Yeah. Right. Whereas with a cat and a small dog, you can you kind of envelop the animal in the flex beam and they will most of them will respond very positively to the warmth and and, and, and stay put. So they often come back. It's usually a sign they like it. Ah, nice. Yeah. Nice. I think that's great. I can't wait to hear how you guys do with uh, your device to counter the fur. That'll be fun to see how that goes. Yeah, it's just a simple mechanism to kind of allow the light to penetrate more deeply so you can you can get further in. Um, but for most regular fur, short fur or something, it's not a major issue. So it was, the light would still come through. Nice. Uh, one, if I can mention one application yes. that we didn't design FlexBeam for. Like we designed this for, uh, you know, to fit the body in the most effective way with the most power output and ease of use. So like an elbow or like on the stomach or shoulder or around the leg uh, for muscle repair and for pain reduction or pain uh, alleviation. Uh, and then early on, we started getting case studies from people who tried it for sleep and who tried using it at night either over their chest or on their stomach as a soothing, comforting sort of ritual before they went to bed. And they started sending us their uh, sleep metrics because they would have tracking devices like an aura ring or like a Garmin watch or something in their sleep and showing the heading deep sleep. And so we started accumulating some of this data and started testing it out more. Uh, it is now a feature that we work considering advertising it more because sleep is a very important issue and also for recovery. 
um, but it's a very, very popular kind of protocol to follow. A lot of people report, and myself included, that it's uh, using it 10 minutes at night will help support a, like a deeper and better sleep, which then uh, helps the recovery process overall. Uh, as I was an unintended kind of feature of this, uh, that we are building, drawing more on the science that we, we get from the users and try to build also for the next device, something that's even more tailored for, for you to have in bed, for example. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, you wouldn't think of it because people, you know, would would associate light with, you know, waking up and morning and things of that nature. But I can see how it can induce the recovery state, you know, as as well. Do you do you kind of keep your eyes from it so you don't get the the light stimulation or have you noticed independent? It's independent for you. Uh, you put the lights on an area of your body. It's typically the, the chest. It can also work on the lower back or the or the gut. So the lights are kind of facing the body and the energy goes okay. in there. So you're not really seeing it very much. You know, red and near infrared is on that part of the spectrum um, that is the furthest away from blue light or anything that's disruptive to the melatonin or the circadian rhythm and the melatonin production. Uh, so... Uh, it has the same kind of wavelengths as some of these applications have that, you know, reduce the amount of blue light in screens and stuff before bed. So in order to get any kind of uh, disruptive light effect from it, again, you would have to stare into it. It's not it's not a, such a bright light because it's on the red side of the spectrum. So a lot of, you know, it, it works in the bedroom as a, if anything, it's a romantic kind of lighting vibe because you get a really red kind of glare, uh, you know, so... Uh, no, we haven't seen any effect that it's, uh, it has um, sort of a negative effect on the circadian rhythm. Uh, quite the opposite. And some people use it early in the morning to get that extra dose of morning light, which then helps to regulate your circadian rhythm as well. So we can use it in the morning or evening or both uh, for sleep. Nice. Yeah, I didn't think about that. But... To... Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you think about light, you're like, just light in the eyes in general but yes the red light is more of the evening you know what your your blue light's more of the issue so that makes sense and that's great because i think a lot of people will wonder about that question you know just that in in general so very cool all right what what have, what other non-traditional uses do you have what else have you heard i'm i'm super curious now of like what other things have you heard from folks I mean, uh, we get sort of user feedback and reviews almost uh, daily. Uh, a lot of them around the same issues. Last week we got from a lady who loved using it on her, like setting one, the red light on her hair to dry her hair. And she claims that she then gets uh, like more volume in her hair somehow. Well, this way, this was new to us. We all had a laugh because this is like kind of, this is not what it was designed for. And it's not like what I would recommend, but people are creative. Uh, and you can use it for lots of different uh, potential issues you might have with the body. So um, as long as you use it within the simple safety guidelines that I've now outlined, uh, it is kind of a, it started as a biohacking device or the favorite device of people who like want to try out and experiment a bit themselves. Uh, it is safe to do so. And you can, I think you could find your own uh, own personal use uh, of that if it, there's not a specific body part that um, that kind of stands out as your sore or your sticking point which is usually where people put it yeah now I'm thinking like rotating you know spots things of that nature if you don't have something that's like currently pressing you could you can move it around and and see how it goes too such cool yeah. stuff such cool stuff and and so we've got Martin you know kind of let's put it this way talk you know talking up your product using your product who are your other athletes? Just so folks can kind of hear and maybe follow and see what they have to say just to gain a little more background for them. Yeah, for those who follow tennis, we have an amazing tennis player called Casper Rude, who's uh, last year was number three in the world. I think this year, the end of top 10, but he's played um, Grand Slam final. And he's used it for a year now. So he was the first who, who signed up to, um, he invested in our company after trying the device and uh, we've been partnering with him this year he's he uses it daily and as part of his physiotherapy regime uh for us that was a very good illustration of the very targeted use for forearm and elbow like tennis elbow and uh for him he uses a lot for his serving arm uh 
tennis at that level is extremely competitive and a lot of repetition. So he was really intrigued by something that could help him come back more quickly between matches. You know, the, the schedule in professional tennis is grueling. Uh, in some of the some of the tournaments, they have to play back-to-back day after day in some of the tournaments. So they get one rest day after playing, you know, uh, three-hour games or three-hour matches uh, and so on. So it was a very good, and we're still working with a lot of physiotherapists in the tennis uh, space. That's been a very popular uh like popular application for flex beam uh and increasingly golf as well we are working now to i don't have the names yet but uh like that i can announce but working with some golf profiles uh and we expect that's a sport that also is sort of a, a perfect fit for a device like this because you can take it with you on the uh on the golf course and it fits uh like targeted issues like hip injuries or like uh that you know, you have one arm or one shoulder or something that's a little bit irksome. I've heard stories from chiropractors in golf that has claimed that between 60 to 80% of golfers are injured and they just play through their injuries. But the injuries there are, um, there's a lot. And a lot of injuries go, say, under the radar of you don't seek necessarily medical attention for it. You just kind of have reg- like some aches and pains that come from being active that you wouldn't think to go to a physiotherapist or go to a doctor. And that's really for us the key sort of demographic right now for FlexBeam and who we're trying to reach through Martin Odegaard and Kasper Rud and these top athletes is not that it's for athletes only. This is really for everyone. Yeah. But it's to get the message out to people who generally have, uh, you know, an active lifestyle who like to do stuff, but that, you know, like most people have something that set them back. Or some something that's blocking them from doing the run that they love, or the like, do the hike that they used to be able to do, and don't identify as necessarily of being sick or in need of specialized medical treatments. They're just kind of brushing away their aches and pains or their their things. So that's really who we have in mind right now. Flex Beam is a sort of core core audience: people who uh, want to improve their health somehow and have something that they um that they can use it for uh in their active lifestyle makes perfect sense that's what i was hoping to get to by talking about the athletes because elbow stuff being an acupuncturist myself it's elbows are tricky and even golfers elbow stuff huge and and you know most of us have some little thing i mean it seems like once we get over 40 there's little things that start to nag us a little bit and and yeah we might not necessarily go to the doctors like eh, it's not that bad it just happens at certain times you know little tweaks and so makes perfect 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 sense to to look at it as a way to heal recover and and keep something little from becoming a big issue and and messing exactly. with it over time yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you use it for? Mostly, Janine. My low back and and my SI joint and my hip. Yeah, I uh, was a figure skater as a kid and fell a lot on the ice. And um, that's my big thing. I, I now have ended up with a little bit of, of pain and tweakiness. It's not all the time, but I do it repetitively because it does seem to to keep me moving. And then I'm not moving in weird patterns, which I think mm-hmm. is a whole nother thing that that the red light therapy can be incredibly, you know, useful for is keeping you out of weird muscular patterns that'll then lead to something bigger down the road. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the doctor on our team, uh, like we co-founded this business with, who has worked with this technology for several decades with patients, her big vision was to create something that people can use at home. So they didn't have to go to the doctor and really the preventative use is probably the most powerful aspect of red light therapy or infrared uh lights that you if you can uh if you can treat something before it becomes an injury uh it has a much greater health application most people are not so proactive in respect to something that has happened and you know so we see most people are buying this device because they are in pain um, but if you can get into that regular usage and make it into a daily ritual so to speak an easy 10 minutes of your day uh you can really, I think, invest a lot in avoiding complications in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And having such a portable device, I mean, that's that's the biggest 
thing that drew me to Flexbeam is like, I'm like, whoa, you're not attached to something. You're not attached to a plug. You're not, you know, I've literally rigged it on an extension cord for me to be able to work in the kitchen with my red light device attached to me. I mean, it's goofy, but that's what we do, right? To try to figure these things out. This solves like people tripping, people getting injured and with extension cords. I, I might have to <laughs> yeah, do that's a whole video. other aspect. Yes. Yeah, that's a whole other aspect. <laughs> No, it's huge. It's huge. So yeah, I, I think this is this is great stuff. Now, tell us a little bit just so folks get the full spectrum because we were showing the device. It's a is it like rechargeable? You 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 put it into a, like a little plug unit? How does it work in terms of getting it charged back up and and things of that nature? Just so folks have the full idea. Yeah, so it's a rechargeable device. Uh, and uh, the battery typically lasts five to six sessions. So like 50 to 60 minutes of use, uh, a little bit depending on which pre like which program you use. Mm -hmm. uh, and so generally just use it, recharge it after you just it's a basic uh, plug. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and it charges within an hour or something like this. So it's, it's, it's uh, it can be recharged many many times uh, to put it this way if you use it a lot. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that is what I was wondering about. I was wondering if there was like a battery pack or if it was just plug. So so good. To yeah, know. the battery pack is embedded into the fourth module that doesn't have lights in it, so both the controller and the battery is in there. So it's super easy to charge, and we're also working on like a version two that will have improved battery uh, and more integrated in with the other light pods and and so on because uh, battery is the one thing that will wear out uh like if you use it a lot but uh we have a five-year warranty on the product and we stand behind the quality of this as a uh, as something you can use for a long time wow five-year warranty that's mm -hmm. that's huge that's huge folks take note of that because i don't think there's any other company that i know of now that's got that long of a warranty on any of their their products so good to know good to know Wow, we've learned a lot. I I've learned a lot about the flex wheel. I'm looking forward to trying it out myself and uh, showing the difference between my extension cords with my current panel and how it looks for me to cook or do whatever in my house um, compared to having the flex beam on. So stay tuned for that. Bjorn, give us give us a scoop on you know the website to find flex beam is Recharge Health. And, and so give us the scoop on where they can find it. Is it, on, do you have some stuff on Instagram, social media? Give us, give us a scoop. Where can we find everything? We yeah, can absolutely. Uh, so uh, our company is called Recharge Health, a uh, short version recharge, because that was our mission from the start. We want to recharge people's health. Uh, so you find us at recharge.health. Uh, the device is called uh, Flexbeam. So on Instagram, you find us on the Flexbeam, uh, at the Flexbeam. Uh, and so you will find it anywhere you search for that. Uh, we sell in our web shop and deliver directly to customers. Next business day shipping, uh, everything as you would expect from an e-commerce uh, platform. And uh, we also have a sixty day, uh, sixty day money back guarantee. So we encourage people to try it for themselves um, because we know that the vast majority of people they want to keep it after they use it. So for us, it's a that's kind of a, a no-brainer. So I uh, encourage you to check it out and give it a trial. I think we can do a little deal for your listeners. Yep. Embed yep. it in the, in the show notes here as yep. well for anyone who would like to try. Uh, and uh, with uh, holidays also coming up uh, soon as we are talking, it's uh, also you know a great gift for um, a family or someone you, you care about. It can be used by many people in a household. It's also a favorite thing to use, like um, in a home that I can find multiple uses and yes. people maybe be fighting over it. I'm not sure. but I know in my family, there has been fights over the red light <laughs> panels, so there's no doubt. But I mean, it's a great way to give the gift of health at any time, you know, whether it's someone's birthday or the holidays. It's, it's a great device. And I can see how it is incredibly innovative with the mobility aspect of them being able to take it with you anywhere. I mean, that's something that we there isn't anything else out there. So you know, I'm glad you could see that and appreciate it. And from your own use of the technology, we are still... Uh, sort of in the infancy of people knowing about this kind of technology. Uh, we started the our company with the idea and the kind of hairy, ambitious goal that one day this will be this will be known to people as something you just have at home because once you realize how powerful it can be, it's sort of a no-brainer. You would have one at home to use for yourself. 
Uh, and we want to be like with Flexbeam, we created the first product and we have more versions to come to create sort of the ultimate product to reach a, a wider market. Mm. Uh, so for anyone who want to try this out and, and uh, learn about what this technology can do for you, uh, I, I highly recommend uh, trying it and integrating it into your daily routine or daily health regimen. Love it. It's the best way to recharge, I hands down. So Bjorn, thanks again for coming on, folks. We will have the the codes and things of that nature in the podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com. Great conversation, Bjorn. I'm looking forward to hearing about what you guys got coming on next in the future. And we'll definitely bring you back on and chat about that as well. I would love to be back. Thank you so much for the conversation and the opportunity and for also spreading good news about health and what you can do to empower your own healing. My pleasure. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.